Remember, we're in the cardiovascular system, and we're talking today about pulse. So what is pulse? Pulse is the rhythmic dilation of an artery. That results from the beating of the heart. So you wouldn't have a pulse in any of your arteries if your heart weren't beating. Okay, so your heart beating is a prerequisite or requirement in order to feel your pulse. As you can see in the picture, you're going to be using two fingers to measure your pulse. Why don't you use your thumb? Well, your thumb has a pulse that is readily palpable. You can feel it. So if you use your thumb, you can count the pulse incorrectly because you might be feeling the pulse from the actual thumb. So you're going to use two fingers. And the most common location is right here is what's pictured. Um, and we'll talk about that. What's the difference with heart rate? So heart rate is the number of heartbeats per unit of time, usually a minute. So heartbeat has to do with the contraction of the heart. The pulse has to do with contraction of an artery. Okay, so um, <clears throat> that is the main difference between them. So heartbeat, literally the number of beats of your heart, and pulse has to do with the rhythmic contractions in an artery. Okay, so where do we measure pulse? Lots of options, okay? We have a lot of arteries in our body. Let's talk about that a little bit, um, a little bit more. <clears throat> where do doctors and nurses most commonly evaluate pulse? In the radial artery, okay? So radial artery right here. So here is my forearm right here. I'm gonna go thumb side and right here in this space. Why do doctors and nurses usually measure there? Well, it's less invasive, especially if you compare it to the neck, right? If somebody's already reaching for your neck, it might make someone uncomfortable. It's also easier to maintain contact with the wrist for a long enough time. Usually, you're going to measure for 20 or 30 seconds and then multiply to get that per minute. If someone is unconscious, though, okay, I'm trying to evaluate whether or not they have a pulse. So I'm going to want to go for first the strongest pulse point. Okay, The further away you go from the heart, the weaker the pulse is. So I'm going for the carotid artery. It is literally the closest I can get. It is also a little bit more aggressive. So um, someone might be a little apprehensive about you reaching for their neck. However, if they're unconscious and I'm trying to determine uh, how they are doing in a potentially life or death situation, it's appropriate to measure in the carotid artery. So how do we do it? So carotid artery, you can see here's the jaw and then right down here, you're gonna feel the pulse of the carotid artery. And sometimes you may have to move your fingers around to find the good spot, but it's not in the front of your neck, okay? It is on the side here. And then you are going to measure your pulse. Radial artery, again, here's your forearm. All right, thumb side right here. Okay, and if you don't feel it right away, you just move your finger slightly because you're going to need to be on one side of the tendon and then you'll be able to feel your pulse. <clears throat> the ulnar artery is going to be on the opposite side. So here's my hand. Radial artery is on this side. The ulnar artery is on this side. So I'm going to go and feel my pulse this way on this side. Okay, that's kind of awkward looking just because I'm trying to show you. And then the brachial artery. So here's my arm. So it literally in my elbow. And that's the one that's used when a doctor um, measures your, or a nurse measures your blood pressure. So they're going to put that stethoscope right there on that brachial artery. And there are a lot more pulse points, as you can see from the one image that I shared. But these are the four that we're going to cover and that I'm going to ask you to remember. All right, so there you have it, all about pulse.